So I have something um, I want to read at the conclusion of this one-year journey. <clears throat> I speak fairly, fairly well, but I think I write better than I speak, so I'm going to read this to you, and hopefully the slideshow will keep you entertained while I'm, I've got my head down. Since the beginning is always the best place to start, the first subject in this series was the Big Bang. With that topic, we learned how surprising the universe is. We learned that it happened everywhere, compelling space to expand and matter to cool over cosmic time. We encountered many jarring surprises about our literal and figurative place in an expansive and expanding cosmos. In our species' childhood, scholars dreamed that our planet was the greatest and grandest thing in the cosmos aside from the heavenly spheres to which were attached the diminutive moon and sun and the scintillating infinitesimal but seemingly countless stars. We, or more properly our ancestors, discovered that contrary to the narrative born of our self-centered notions and derived from our several animal senses, that we instead inhabited a gargantuan cosmos wherein the sun is a titanic ball of nuclear fire among billions of others. Barely a century ago, our species discovered through clever instruments and ingenious surmising that these other stellar fires moving in their trackless pirouettes comprise an awesome pinwheel of brilliant light spinning with magisterial power in a sea of darkness. We are, in fact, looking out at the cosmos from around a speck-like star in a single raft of a hundred billion stars floating in an ocean of night. And we are not alone. Surprisingly, we found a hundred billion or more essentially similar rafts of stars, galaxies distant and unfathomably different from our own. Today, we have concluded our first voyage of wonder. We have wandered to the edges of knowable space, impelled by wonder, driven by imagination, and bounded by evidence of what is possible and real. We have followed the geometry of space itself and uncovered beautiful symmetries that give force to nature while guaranteeing that enough things never change to keep the world predictable and generally constant through time. We've seen how mathematics and geometry, first used to quantitatively describe our universe, have given rise to a brand new predictions about what we should be able to measure, predictions that have been borne out. When combining mathematics with the symmetrical conservation of the speed of light, scientists have deduced and subsequently confirmed that our everyday world, experienced at everyday speeds, transforms into an unanticipated reality, where progress, or the progress of clocks and the extent of rulers, the very fabric of space and time, become mutable and relative. We've seen that predicting and apprehending reality does not necessarily mean that we can comprehend it. The mysteries of quantum mechanics still challenge our best philosophers who haven't yet quite put to rest what it all means. Together, we zoomed in on the atom where symmetry theories and quantum mechanics combine to populate a microcosm intuitively inaccessible but manifestly wonderful. The wheeling galaxies and intermittently buzzing atoms have always been there for us to explore. They have continued their various courses while our civilizations have matured and as we have begun to learn to temper fantasy and myth with fact and measurement. By applying our remarkable intellect and building wondrous instruments of manipulation and appraisal, we have constructed an ever more complete model of nature in our collective consciousness a model exhibiting ever greater fidelity with ever greater internal consistency. From our middling place between a gargantuan cosmos and a puzzling microcosmos, we have presumed to learn the secrets of nature. Nature has rewarded our study with technology, technology that we use to diagnose tumors, to locate ourselves on the surface of the earth, to communicate across the globe, and to enrich our lives with a bounty derived from the practical application of the wonders we've discovered. Our generation and numberless generations of our forebears have contemplated our place in the cosmos, 
For almost all of history, we believed we were at its center, set upon a pinnacle or at least a pedestal, as seemed intuitively reasonable. And then Copernicus gave us a great shove, and we've been tumbling down ever since. Copernicus' notion has even compelled us to invent the idea of multiple universes to keep this one from being magically special. You might think that with each discovery we seem to be tumbling toward irrelevancy. Some people are bothered by this, by the loneliness, by this cosmic irrelevancy. With downcast eyes, far too many consign their future to bored emptiness. I entreat you, my friends, to instead lift your heads and bask in the opportunities for discovery, for self-enrichment, and for the countless ways scientific knowledge can enrich and enhance our ability to care for one another, for our planet, and for ourselves. Next year, the quest continues, and we will move away from the cosmic and focus more on earthly wonders. We will spend not inconsiderable time on the mysteries of life science from its origin to development. We will also cover topics relevant to day-to-day -day life, such as economics and political theory. From there, the discussion meanders to the philosophy of science and the acquired skill of critical thinking. We wrap up with a selection of perplexing, unsolved scientific mysteries. As I said at the beginning of this series, and as I have reiterated nearly every program since, all the evidence of nature compels us to confront the truth that we are in this world alone, excepting the seven billion or so others like us. The clear implication is that insofar as our planet remains livable, our society remains just, our fellow living beings thrive, and our lives remain bountiful and joyful, it is up to us and our several billions of friends to make it so. Science is not a thing remote and dry, it is the filter we use to separate the plausible from the pretend, the possible from the preposterous. Science delights and surprises and forces us to expand our concepts of reality. Science helps us uncover the problems we face, from the cosmic to the terrestrial, even those personal and self-inflicted. It tells us about unavoidable trade-offs between progress and pollution, between creation and destruction. But it also inspires us to dream of new ways to solve or reduce those problems. And when we can't make everything we dislike go away, it informs us about the options and opportunities that lay beyond the crises we confront. It bounds our fertile and spectacularly creative imagination to the real world and uses evidence to guide our quest for a better future. Thank you for joining me on this year's quest.